Hello YouTube and welcome to Network Playroom. Now in my last video I described the OSPF packet header which is the same for all different OSPF packet types. In this video we're gonna look at type number one or the OSPF hello packet. So let's just run, jump right to it and look at each field in more detail. Uh, first, we have the network mask field, which is the address mask of the interface from which the packet was sent. Now I'm going to mark this field with the little star here. And that star means that the field must match between the routers in order for them to become adjacent. So next up we have the hello interval field which is the period of time in seconds between transmissions of hello packets on the interface. And again, if the sending and receiving routers don't have the same value for this field, they do not establish a neighbor relationship. So this deserves another star. Following that, we have the options field, and this actually ties together with what I've drawn here. What probably looked like a random string of letters inside boxes, but hopefully it's going to make sense to you in a few moments. But so, so options are included in the hello packet to ensure that neighbors have compatible capabilities. And a router might reject the neighbor because of a capabilities mismatch. So this field actually consists of eight bits, but we're only going to look at the n slash p bit and the e bit, which I consider to be the most important bits for this discussion. So let's jump into this website that I have opened here from itcertnotes.com and this describes each option field or the bit in the options field in more detail. So we're just going to go ahead and look here at the end bit. So I'm going to read that quickly. The end bit is used only in hello packets. The end bit is set when the originating router supports Type 7 NSSA external LSAs. Neighboring routers with mismatched end bit values will not form neighbor relationship. This restriction ensures that all OSBF routers within an area support NSSA capabilities. When the end bit is set to 1, the E bit must be 0. Okay, so the end bit signifies that the originating router can support type 7 NSSA external LSAs. And if you notice already, type 7 LSAs are originated inside a not so stubby area. But this is a discussion for a future video and there's going to be a lot more to it, which we're going to see even later on in, in this video as I talk more about the options bits. You know, like OSPF is a compl complex protocol and it has all these little tricks that you need to know about. Uh, but more on that later. Now let's look at the P bit. So the P bit is used only in type 7 NSSA external LSA headers. Due to this reason, the N and B bits can share the same position in the options field. The P propagate bit is set to inform the NSSA ABR to translate type 7 LSSA LSAs into type 5 LSAs. So when a router learns an external network, learns of a external network inside a not so stubby area. So when the ASBR originates an LSA, it's a type 7 
LSA. But when this is advertised in into the rest of the OSPF domain, it must be translated into a type 5 LSA. Now the PBIT signifies whether this translation will happen or not. If it is set, the ABR will translate type 7 LSAs into type 5 LSAs. And if it's not set, the translation will not happen. And this can happen in some cases, that there's no translation. But again, this gets very complicated and we're going to discuss this in a future video. So finally, we have the E bit. The E or external routing capability bit is set when the originating router is capable of accepting AS external LSAs. It will be Z to 1 in all AS external LSAs and in all LSAs originated in the backbone and non-stop areas and will be Z to 0 in all hellos and LSAs originated within a stub area. Additionally, this bit is used into in the hello packets to indicate the capability of a router interface to send and receive type 5 AS external LSAs. Neighboring routers with mismatched EBIT values will not form neighbor relationships. This restriction ensures that all OSBF routers within an area support the stop capabilities. Okay, so the EBIT signifies that the router is capable of sending and receiving type 5 LSAs. And for the stop areas, the E bit is going to be 0. So let me go back to the diagram here. So the N bit must match and the E bit must match between the neighbors. Wow, that's a really bad star. There we go. Um, okay, next we have the router debt interval, uh, which is the number of seconds the originating router will wait for a hello from a neighbor before declaring that neighbor dead. And this is four times the hello interval. So for broadcast networks, for example, the hello interval is going to be 10 seconds. So the dead interval would be 40 seconds. And I just realized that I jumped over the router priority field. So let's look at that now. So the router priority field is used in the election of the designated router and the backup designated router. And if this field is set to zero, the originating router is ineligible to become the DR or the BDR. So let's see, if this is zero, then the router cannot become a DR or a BDR. Oops. All right, and next up, we have the designated router field, which is, of course, the IP address of the interface of the designated router on the network. Note that it is not the router ID. Let me just write that here. Not router ID. And if the a designated router is not elected, this field is set to 0, .0, .0, 0 Okay, next up, backup designated router. So like the designated router field, the backup designated router field is the IP address of the interface of the backup designated router on the network. Again, this is not the router ID, it's the interface. Uh, IP address and this field could also be set to 0, .0, .0, 0, .0, 0, 0 if the BDR has not been elected because some network types do not use 
the designated and backup designated router. But we'll talk about those at another time. And finally, we have the neighbor field which is the recurring field that lists all router IDs of all neighbors on the network from which the originating router has received a valid hello in the past dead interval. So during the past dead interval. So yeah, this, this depends on how many neighbors the router knows of. But this could be something like 1.1.1.1, 2.2.2.2, dot one dot one dot one, and 3.3.3.3. So if the router has received a hello from these routers, it'll list them here. So now that we've gone over the fields in the hello packet, so let's actually jump on this website to look at a packet capture. So this packet capture is from packetlife.net, another great networking blog. I will leave a link in the description so you can find it and go check that out. But here, this is actually something I could have shown you in my previous video. So let's just quickly look at the OSPF header just to show you that it is actually the same for all different OSPF packet types. So notice here we have the version field, the message type, packet length, the source router ID, the area ID, checksum, and the authentication fields. So, oops, so just briefly memorize that and notice that we're looking at a hello packet now. So let me jump here to packet number two. 13, which is a database description packet. And as you can see, we have the exact same fields in this packet. The packet type is, of course, going to be different. Hello, packet was type number one. This is uh, type number two. And let me just like scroll down here a little bit and show you even another one. Um, let's see. Link state request. So packet type number three. But again, the same fields are there. Okay, but let's go back to the beginning and open the hello packet again, because that's really what we're focused on in this video. So here, as I just showed you on the diagram, first we have the network mask field. There's the hello interval, which is 10 seconds. And options field this is the these are the eight bits that i talked about and these two specifically are the one that we looked at so you can see that the e bit is set which means that this router supports type 5 lsas so it can learn from external routes outside the ospf domain and here is the router priority. And the dead interval is 40 seconds or four times the hello interval. And you can see the designated router and backup designated router are not set or they have not been elected. Now this part here, I'm not sure what it is. I think it has something to do with the uh, LLS data block bit that is set here. So it's probably adding this part at the end of the hello packet. I would have to further investigate to find out uh, the purpose of this, but you know, in the context of this video, uh, it's not so important. I just wanted to look at the basic OSPF hello packet. And that's really what we've done here. So again, here's the diagram. You can see all the fields. And here's the actual packet capture, which contains the same fields. 
So that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.